Hello and welcome everyone to this session on effective resource management in a matrix organization. We have Jacob Hansen from Projectum, one of our good sponsors to uh, talk about uh, what this topic is already all about and give us walk us through some demos and examples. Uh, I'm sure this will be an awesome session. So uh, Jacob, please take it away. Thank you and welcome everyone. This is a uh, sunny Denmark, very early uh, in Europe. Uh, so I hope you, uh, you are joining either very late or, or very early uh, from, from Easter or from, from, from the US. So my name is uh, Jacob and uh, I have uh, the privilege to talk about uh, resource management uh, seen from different perspectives. So uh, let's go ahead and um, actually look at it. I just need to get up running. So um, the agenda for this topic, that will actually be that uh, we will look at the uh, resource management from uh, different levels. So it could be portfolio level down to individual level. Then we will look at uh, the organizational uh, PPM design. So you can work um, in, in organizations where uh, you are matrix, you are bimodal. So we will look into that topic. And then we'll look into the actual tooling where we can um, uh, actually do the resource management on all the different levels. So this is um, looking at the team planner, which is an add-in from Projectum, uh, looking at traditional planning, agile planning, and hybrid uh, planning mode. And then I will do a live demo in the system. So what can actually go wrong? So uh, the focus now, um, that will be to uh, deep dive into, um, just need to get my clicker up running here, two seconds. Here we go. Um, Projectum is uh, a Microsoft partner. Uh, we are the world best partner. Uh, we have been finalist uh, in 2016. We won the award in 2015 and in 2017, so last year, within this year, uh, we are the best Microsoft partner within project and portfolio management. That means that we are almost 80 people working dedicated only with project portfolio management and we work with the Microsoft technology stack. Uh, we are present in, the, in, the, in, the, in a global uh, context, uh, office in Copenhagen, Amsterdam, uh, in Sweden, uh, Stockholm, and of course in Denmark. Um, we do our own apps. So based on the Microsoft technology stack, we innovate uh, business apps. And the team planner that you will see later is actually one of our apps uh, dealing with resource management in a more effective way. Um, that's it, that's Projectum. So very short about uh, me. I've been working with the uh, product and portfolio management for almost 14 years now. That means from a business perspective. I've been uh, head of PMO at the Lego Group, so responsible for implementing product and portfolio management at the Lego Group. I've been um, doing portfolio resource management stuff at uh, large enterprises. And uh, until now, I've been talking and meeting with a lot, around 300 uh, different clients only talking about resource management. So resource management is really my topic. In Projectum, when we look at customers, then uh, seen from a Microsoft perspective, uh, Microsoft look at customers uh, from a, a vertical. So you might identify you into a vertical. Um, what is more important in the PPM context, in the product portfolio management context, is, is really all about understanding which mythology you're working with. It could be an IPMA, PMI, safe. So either you are very agile in your mythology or you're very traditional, or you might be in between and that matters. So we need to understand which kind of mythology or probably you have your own mythology. So you take the best from PMI and then you add up some, um, some specific uh, methods uh, from your own company. Then in Projectum, we look at PPM disciplines. So to have an effective PPM platform, we look at disciplines. User adoption is very important, portfolio and project management, of course, and today we will talk about the resource management topic. But they are also like uh, business intelligence, uh, financial management, uh, BI, etc. In the bottom, we see the Microsoft technology stack. So different application in Office 365 suite actually has something to do with PPM. And some of them are very good at it and some are very bad at it. So uh, we look at often at the uh, product online, uh, at BSTS, uh, Power BI, as uh, some of the major drivers, and then of course Microsoft Team as a collaboration platform. Today we will look also at the bot, because in Projectum we have created PPM Bottler, and that is the AI and bot service that will help create resources, create project, 
add a request uh, for projects, etc. So um, we'll look into that later. Resource management, what is it actually? Yeah, on the left right now, you see PPM Butler. If I uh, am a line manager, a resource manager, and I want to onboard a new resource, in the good old days, you would go into resource center and add the add resource button. Nowadays, we look at PPM Butler. PPM Butler is running in Microsoft Teams. It's running on my iPhone. So I simply help, write help to my PPM Butler. It asks me, what can I help? With, please create a resource here. Okay, I will create a resource. What is the name? That's the new dude. Okay, is it a, like a role or is it a real person? It's like a real person. Which department does this resource belong to? Team Delta, because I'm a line manager for Team Delta. Okay, does this person have a built-in profile? That means, is it like a finisher? Is it a starter profile? And when should the onboarding date be? It should be today. And uh, does this resource come with a cost? And uh, if it's like an external resource, it could come with like a $40 uh, price tag per hour uh, cost. So now PPM Bot will simply go into the platform, into Product Online, and create the resource. And the user interface, that is the PPM Butler on my iPhone uh, talking uh, to my Product Online. That's an example of what and how we see resource management being effective. On the other side, on the right side, once you have created this new dude as an external resource, you see Team Planner. Team Planner, that is the app that we will look into later on for doing resource management. And here you simply search your resources on the right. I find the new dude I've just created with my iPhone, and I drag and drop them into the planning window. And then in the planning window, I can start allocate the resources. So here we will have a project manager requesting 20 hours for two months, and the line manager will go in and give a handshake and say, here you go, you will get this new due one uh, with 20 hours and the green turn, uh, the screen turned green. So this is very simple what resource management is when it hits um, the users. So what is Team Planner then? Let's deep dive into Team Planner and team, how Team Planner can help uh, working with the resource management uh, across different organization type. Uh, it could be matrix organizations. So Team Planner, that is an add-on for Product Online, you can go to Office Store, uh, and in Office Store, you can um, download the app, and then you can configure the app with a configuration module. There are guides, so you can find more information uh, in the link below, in the left corner. And uh, once you get this um, uh, slide deck, uh, this video, you can see in the screen that it is, there's a play button, so that's actually a YouTube video explaining what the, what the app is. But uh, let's look at, um, at resource management at different levels. When I meet customers and they say, Jacob, I want resource management, the first question is I ask them is, uh, on what level do I want resource management? Is it all about portfolio level, talking about FTEs for the next two years for your R&D projects? Is it for the purpose of the PMO or the CXO level? If it is, then please look at Team Planner please look at the portfolio simulation capabilities in Project Online, and please look at Power BI as a toolbox. Then they say, yeah, but Jacob, we also have like a PMO, a program office, and they are all also interesting in, in doing resource management. Yeah, use the same tools, that is my answer. When we talk with the team leads, with the line organization, probably the, time, uh, the team manager also want resource management. But now we are on a more detailed level. It's about named resources, where on portfolio level, we often talk about roles. Uh, competency groups. We talk more in hours and weeks uh, on the team level and on a project level, where on the portfolio level is more uh, rough planning uh, that we're dealing with. Talking by, with the project managers, they say, okay, Jacob, I want the resource management working in my project schedule. So it's all about getting a handshake from the line organization so that I will ask for some resources, I will get them, and then I can utilize them in my project schedule. And then I have individual so the team members, they, they want to know what to do when um, they will look, use a, like an Outlook or Stack or, or Power BI. So what you see is actually resource management on many levels. We need to identify what level is important and which tool set to use. And as you can see, Team Planner, the uh, add-in uh, for Project Online, work um, effective on the four upper level, so level one to four. Going down to uh, level five and six, Probably we will go into Project Professional and we will utilize the assignments that has been done with the U15 Planner. I'll come into that later. So 
talking with clients, we need to understand, are you a matrix organization? Are you traditional? Are you bimodal? Are you agile with PMO? Are you like in hybrid mode or are you fully agile? So just double clicking on this. Almost all clients that we have, they come out of a traditional perspective, meaning they do traditional resource management and project management, uh, portfolio management from top to the bottom. So therefore you will see the T's uh, in the traditional perspective. Then we have some customers, they are working in like a buy mode. So Gartner tell you have a company, within that company you have two companies. So the one part of the company that could be product development, they are working fully agile. And then in the IT department, they are traditional. So you really have like two portfolios where resources are not shared across uh, the two portfolios. That is what Gartner uh, called by model. Then we have customers uh, having a PMO on top, are very traditional on top, but they execute everything in the projects agile. That is what we call agile with PMO. And then we have the hybrid. And here we will see like 80% of all our customers, they are typically in a hybrid mode. They are very traditional on top. They do resource management on top in a traditional way. They have yearly forecasting, they have budgeting. So for the next year budget, we want those projects and we will estimate a business case. We will request some resources for it. And once we come into the new financial year, we will start doing allocations. We even have a, a mix in the execution level. So there will be agile projects and there will be uh, traditional projects. And even worse, and that is how life is, uh, we will have a hybrid mode within the project. So one project will start traditional. I will plan, I will design, uh, I will kick off my project. And once I come into the uh, execution phase, then I start to become agile. Then I will design for sprint and I will deliver for sprint. And by the end of the for sprint, I become traditional again, and then I make a burn-in period, and then I will uh, uh, serve the, the, the customer for the project uh, in the two-month period, and that will be in the traditional way. So that is why you see in, in brackets the TAT. Uh, that is simply like you are agile in the execution phase of one project. And then some might say uh, to the very right, uh, scale agile. It's in Nirvana. So here we are fully agile. The organization is working agile with own teams, with release trains, with a release train engineer. Uh, you don't have a PMO, you're working in value streams, etc. So we really need to understand where we are. And once we understand where we are and we look at the team planner uh, capabilities, then to the very right, you can see there are two modes uh, working out of team planner. Either you can work in traditional mode or you can work in the agile planning mode. And here you see a mapping. So once you are in uh, organization uh, design, it could be a hybrid mode. Then in hybrid mode, you should use both capabilities of traditional planning and uh, agile planning. One thing that is uh, special, that is the third planning mode, that is the hybrid planning mode. Because the hybrid planning mode, that is the most difficult one. And often it's also the most uh, customers that we have that are actually are, are in hybrid mode. That means that sometimes uh, a project is staffed like an agile way. So you have a release train going on and uh, that uh, resources also sometimes work with the administrative work and sometimes they also work uh, uh, traditional in a project. Uh, it could be project A as a traditional and it could be project uh, B as an agile project. So let's look into hyper planning mode later uh, because that is the most difficult, uh, but I really think that team plan and product online help you uh, solve this uh, problem, so to speak, if you see it as a problem in hyper planning mode. So takeaways from this slide, three planning modes. There are traditional, there are agile planning mode, and then we can be in a hyper planning mode. So let's deep dive into those three uh, planning modes and understand the complexity of it before we look at the tool. We have designed a very simple, easy understanding, best practice process, how we see traditional planning. I know it can be more complex and I have been doing it more complex for customers, but this is the very simple way. There are two roles in the swim lane. There's a requester, there's an allocator. The requester that will be typically be the project manager, the allocator will typically be the line manager, the planner for the department. 
So the requester will start doing a request often on a role. I want a project manager, I want a senior business consultant, and I want it for uh, 100 hours the next two months. That request will go into the allocator, into the line manager. And here the line manager will very every month they will do allocation of own named resources into administrative tasks because there are two things going on in a department. There are project work and there are everything else. Everything else is actually what we call administrative work. It could be ta departmental time, absence, vacation, um, technical support, something that has nothing to do with project. So the first thing is that the line manager, the allocator needs to allocate to operational activities. And then what's this left uh, over from that, that will actually be uh, available time for uh, projects. So the requester requests to the line manager, the line manager will allocate resources to a project. That uh, allocation uh, of Jacob to that uh, project A will go back to the requester to the project manager and the project manager could review it. Sometimes they fulfill the request, sometimes not. And if needed, they will adjust every month uh, or every week uh, the request. Looking at team planner, uh, team planner come with, comes with some features uh, in traditional planning. Project uh, can request resources in the metric organization based on those named individuals. So you can both request on role level, but you could also request directly on names. Best practice is using roles in the traditional planning mode. Departments, they can allocate uh, name uh, to um, name resources to the projects. They can also do the planning of administrative times on various categories. Then there are built-in uh, KPI reporting uh, in the tool so that you know how your department is utilized and if you get uh, the full allocation uh, that you requested as a project manager. And then of course you have an intuitive navigation so it's really like drag and drop uh, and heat map color uh, features that you see. Talking about the requester, often uh, we discuss with customers uh, on what level to request. Do we want to request on team level, role, or name level? So here you see a little very, very small matrix where the requester can allocate, uh, sorry, can uh, request on a team and role level, and um, the allocator can allocate on team or uh, named uh, level. Looking at the, the screen uh, of team planner, just to make a mapping, if you look at the screen now, then on the left, you see 100% and you see all the project that is requesting something for the department lead that is uh, logged into the, to the app. In the middle, you see the planning window where you do the allocations and look at the request. So for each time period, you see a request and allocation column. And then on the very right, you have your organization where you can search uh, your resources and you can drag them into the planning window. So to make a mapping, the hours FTE, year, month, week, days, the settings that you simply adjust in the top. Looking at the uh, allocator, the organization that the allocator owns, that is on the right. And uh, looking at the requester, that is to the left and that will be in the planning window. So this is how uh, the, the different dimension is designed towards uh, the application uh, team planner in traditional planning mode. The agile planning mode, that is different. Um, often when we are talking about agile planning mode and agile organizations, then they don't even want to talk about resource management because God forbid, it's not allowed uh, to talk about resource management in an agile context. But in daily operation, everyone has something else that has something to do with only doing project work. So often what we see the best practice is that even in an uh, agile context, we will allocate resources to some administrative work because there will be departmental meeting, it will be absence and vacation. And that will give us some free capacity. And then instead of having a requester and an allocator, often here we see that, um, that there's only an allocator. And the allocator, that will be the team lead. So I'm sitting in my department, I'll pick up my phone, someone will call me, please deliver something, Jacob. And then we're together with my team, with the various role I have in my team, I will simply just create by myself some items in a backlog, and then I will, together with my team, start executing. And then I will deliver some value, but I will not deliver some hours or roles towards a product manager. So the process is very simple here. It's all about managing your own work, 
in your department and then afterwards create the items that you want that could be items for sprint two in a project. Uh, and then you allocate on a very high level uh, the named resources. Uh, and often we see in the agile context, it's not about days. It's more about for that release train, uh, five FTEs that will work in this PI um, uh, dealing with the seven sprints that has been designed. So the features that agile planning mode come with, that is uh, more high level planning uh, on agile release trains. It could be uh, planning the program increments or the sprints. Uh, you will have a backlog. So all your unfulfilled uh, requests, they will be in a backlog. And then you can manage the sprints uh, by dragging items from the backlog into your team and allocate uh, on a high level. You can do that on named resources. You can also do the planning uh, of administrative time. And then you have this visual planning capabilities. So that means it's really about um, drag and drop, you have uh, the visualization of that you drag a bar. I will come into that uh, on the next slide. You also have the KPIs reporting uh, about uh, the velocity of your team and uh, the utilization that you have in your team. So looking at the dimension in agile context, um, it's a more complex thing. It's like a three uh, dimension um, model. On the left, you see portfolio, uh, you have the organization dimension. So it's all about portfolio, the program, the release train, the team, the name individual. Then they need to do some work. The work often we call that epic feature story item bug. So there will be different names for that. And all the work will be handled within a time dimension. And in this case, this will be a year, it could be a, a PI of a quarter, it could be a sprint of 14 days, or it could actually be down to days. So this model, how does that work when we look at uh, agile planning mode? First, you see on the screen, you see the agile planning mode and you might already notice this look different from the traditional planning mode. And it does. On the left, you still have all the project that might request something in your department if there is a requester. If there is no requester, you can see uh, in the middle where you see the red bar, you can see a new button and here the team lead, the planner, uh, the re release train engineer, call it whatever you want, can add items to the backlog. So the super task, as you see here, that is red, it is in the backlog. And underneath, I have my release train, and I have the named individuals in my release train. And on the right, I can search names uh, if I want to add resources uh, to my release train. In the upper right corner, 33%, this is the utilization of, uh, of my uh, release train or my team. So the mapping here goes this way. Uh, the year, PI, sprint, and days, the time dimension, it goes up to the time settings in the top. The organization dimension, the portfolio program release train item, it can be categorized uh, to the right. And the work in the bottom, that will be the work that will go into the backlog. And then you simply drag from the backlog, the red bar, the super task, you drag it down to named individuals. So this is how agile planning mode works. Then we have the hyper planning mode. The hyper planning mode, that is a mix of traditional planning mode and the agile planning mode. For those organizations that sometimes do allocations to a traditional project, where a project manager requests on a role, and the line manager wants to allocate uh, the named based on a role. And then the same project might also request some resources from a, a team somewhere. And that team is organized uh, self-control team. They're managing all their work by themselves. So there you have a team lead that wants something into a backlog. So what team planner does in this context is really about the project manager will request some of the work will go to a the traditional line organization where the allocator, the line manager, will allocate in the traditional planning capabilities. And some other work uh, request from the project will go into, uh, into the team, uh, into the agile planning mode. So how does that look from a, from a tool perspective? You know, the project manager will work in team planner. They will request search on the right, and then they will request on a role and that role will go to a traditional planning mode 
for an allocator that could be a traditional matrix um, organization. And then some other work will go to a, to a team lead uh, in an agile context. So the example could be uh, some work in this specific one project, it will be sent to a project, uh, to a line manager in a, a traditional planning mode. And some other work uh, will go into the backlog uh, in the agile planning mode. So this is the way that uh, the hyper planning mode uh, will work for you. So now it's time for, um, for demo. So I'll just switch my screens and window and then I will um, um, look into a, to a demo where we'll try to, to focus on, on the tool sets based on what we just uh, heard. So it's all about uh, using Project Online and Team Planner and then uh, look at it uh, from a traditional, agile, and from a hyper-planning perspective. Uh, we will look at the Project Online uh, in, in general, just to understand what Project Online is. And, um, and then we'll deep dive into the resource management context. So, I will just switch my screen. So what you see right now, that is a, a Project Online. It's running in my browser. Um, Project Online, in this case, has been configured uh, with Team Planner. So go into App Store, you download Team Planner, and then you configure Team Planner in the configuration module, and then you are ready to go. The first thing that we uh, would look at uh, is actually uh, creating a project, because now it's a new project. And what you see here um, down in the right corner that is actually uh, my PPM bottler. So I could now uh, ask my uh, PPM bottler uh, for help. Please help me. And then PPM bottler will help me um, with some services. And now I just, something is happening here. I just need to refresh two seconds. What can go wrong in a live demo? So here we go. I'm asking my PPM butler for help and um, my PPM butler comes up with uh, some services. I could add a schedule to a project. I could create a new project. I could uh, create a new resource. I could request resources on the project. I could update my KPI red, green, yellow every month, or I could add some tasks to a project. So in this case, I would actually um, create a new project. And uh, then it comes up and asks me, is it an agile project, Jacob, or is it a more a traditional project? And in this case, I will create a traditional project, so I'll use the template for a traditional project. And I will, in this case, I will call it um, Project Virtual Conference 18. The, Description, Jacob. I will put in demo and it should start today. So now PPM Butler uh, will create a project for me. So I'm ready to, to do uh, ordinary project management PPM stuff on this project. We could also look at uh, the situation where a line manager uh, will onboard a new resource. So in this case, uh, the line manager will uh, tell PPM Butler, please help me. Um, creating a new resource because now I will on, uh, onboard a new resource. So the name of uh, that resource, that will be the virtual dude. And then the PPM bot will ask, is it uh, like a real person or is it more like a role you want to create? In this case, I will uh, onboard an external resource. So it will be like a person. Then it asks me, which role does this belong to? So um, I would uh, add it as a business consultant role. Then PPM bot will ask me, what is the department that you want to do it in? And in this case, I will uh, assign this person to Team Delta because I'm a line manager from Team Delta. The onboarding date, that will be also today. Uh, and uh, if this external resource comes with a cost, uh, I could uh, put in a cost. And now PPM bot will create and onboard a new resource for me. Now, later, I will have available in Team Planner uh, for doing it. So, I also get a notification down here. Um, 
my project has now been created uh, from PPM Butler. So as I was doing the onboarding of the resource, uh, PPM Butler has uh, completed um, uh, the creation of the project. So let's look at the um, project center. So in project center, um, that is where in, I have my portfolio uh, in product online. And the portfolio uh, could be grouped uh, into um, two different uh, perspectives. So in this case, uh, I have the grouping of projects and it's based on the stage gate model. So this will be my traditional portfolio. And in my uh, traditional portfolio, you could see I have created now a new project and it's called um, Project Virtual Conference. So that is actually the project that we just uh, created with PPM Bot now. So traditional organization working traditional mode, they will typically work with project uh, group this way. The agile project, it could look something like that. Um, so in a bimodal context, I will switch between those two modes here. I will work with value streams and then the value stream, I have my different epics and they are grouped into um, to different uh, stages of the portfolio. So it either it's a portfolio backlog, we are reviewing it or we are implementing. So in this demo, I will uh, focus on um, the project we just created, uh, the conference project, and the Epic Team Planner here. That is my Agile project. So, looking at the um, uh, Team Planner. On the front page, um, there is an um, icon called, uh, if you want to create a request uh, on a project. Either I use PPM Butler, I could actually use PPM Butler to create request, you saw that. But I could also just ordinary go into a project and then start requesting in a traditional manner. That means I'm the project manager, the project manager is logged in, and the project manager will request uh, resources. So the first thing I will do, uh, that is going to the front page, I will go to allocate resource and, uh, uh, sorry, uh, request resources. Allocate that is of course. Um, just need to click the right button this way. So the project manager will go and request resources. What will happen if, the, um, if you uh, want to allocate resources? So team planner will load and the team planner will load with the projects where you are the project manager. So the cockpit now, that will be your project manager and all the projects where you are the owner of the project manager, this is, that is what you will see on the screen, nothing else. So you need to be assigned as project manager. And uh, what you see right now, um, that is on the left, I have, I just pin it here to the left, I have my project virtual conference uh, 18. If I want to look at the details of that project, I could actually look into some of all the custom fields so that I can understand uh, the details of the project. I could work with my time settings up here. So I can simply drag and drop time settings. I could work in hours or FTEs. And I could work in years, months, weeks, or even down to days. Best practice is typically what we see that you will work in, in, in months and uh, sometimes down to the, to the week level. So on the very right, I have the catalog of roles that I can request in my organization. So if I want to search for a business consultant, I will simply just be in my search field, uh, search for business. And then I can see that uh, without a picture, that would be a role and if there is a name, this uh, team plan has been configured so I can request um, directly unnamed, but we could also uh, configure it that you're only allowed to uh, request on roles. So in this case, I will uh, look at the business consultant from um, Team Delta, or it could also be from uh, Team Bravo. So I will simply just drag the business consultant role into my planning window. And now I can start request. So you on my screen, I see two columns the request column, and I see the allocation column. And the request column is for the project manager and the allocation is for the line manager. And now we are working in traditional mode. That means that uh, I could put in 20 hours of request. I could drag it, the value, like you do in Excel. 
my screen is lagging like this, and everything becomes red. So red means you have an issue, and the issue is right now you have nothing allocated. You could even put in a message here. So if you're working in a matrix organization, now I'm requesting a role, I'm requesting a business consultant, but I could talk about, uh, please uh, add a German skill set because we will work in, the, in, in Germany for this project. This is a chat. This is not Skype for Business. This is a chat that is stored within uh, standard resource engagement. So all the data I work with here and all the data I create is not stored in the app. It's all the projects to the left, they're coming from Project Center and Project Online. The resources to the right are coming from Resource Center. And the uh, request and allocations that I do in my middle screen, that is um, standard resource engagements uh, in the Microsoft platforms. And all data are stored uh, in Microsoft standard uh, platform. So now I have requested um, a business consultant for three months, 20 hours. I could actually um, rename this to phase one, and then I could add a phase two if I would like to do, and the phase two will also be for the business consultant. So I drag business consultant to the project header level, and it will create a new item, I could call it phase two. And then I could uh, tell that I want 30 hours in three months in phase two, like this. Now I could collapse everything and I will have a simple heat map where I have my problems. If you look to the very left, I can see a KPI with 0% because nothing has been allocated at all. So this is very simple how a project manager in a traditional organization would create a request based on searching resources, drag them into the planning window, and then voila, now it has been uh, saved. If you want uh, a different way of typing in uh, and request instead of dragging and dropping, then you can click new, and then you can have it in a simple uh, form like uh, standard resource engagement actually works. So look at the, um, the line manager. So the line manager, they will also uh, work in team planner. So Tuesday morning, I'm a line manager. I've received an email notification from team planner that something one has requested something my, from my department. I will log into uh, to Project Online. I will click allocate resources. And now team planner will load with my department. So based on that Jacob is a uh, line manager, based on that it has been configured so it understands my department, uh, it will load all the projects that are requesting my department and it will load uh, all my resources that I'm responsible for. So now in Team Planner, I will simply look at uh, what uh, I need to allocate on. Looking to the very left, I could see that now there's a project down here and the project has a red icon to the left, meaning it has not been staffed at all. So if I'm scrolling up and down here, I can see all the green bars, they are, they are good to go. This project, iPad rollout, there's still some work to allocate on here. And uh, the yellow is actually over allocated. So, and I have my administrative items in the, in the bottom. It could be vacation, uh, departmental meeting, uh, support, technical support. But looking at the project virtual conference, now I can see that the project manager has requested for phase one. There is a green icon on the chat so I can look at the message. And I can say, okay, um, before answering, I will look at what my uh, free capacity is. So on the very right, I could open up uh, my business consultant area. And I can look at Anne Catherine. And Catherine is fully green. So green means utilized. Red means you have something to do, the person is not utilized. So clicking at Jacob here, I will now look at Jacob and Jacob is 11% planned in this time period. So reducing that time period up here, I can see that Jacob in this period are planned 20%. It's not good enough. He's simply not doing enough. So this is the heat map for, for Jacob. So here I can see what Jacob is working on. And I could actually go in and say, okay, if he has nothing to do, I could actually 
um, allocate him to administrative work here, 10% of his time. At least that will put up my utilization of Jacob um, to 25%. But Jacob is free, so I could actually allocate Jacob to the project. So clicking at the project and taking Jacob and simply jack, drag sorry, uh, Jacob into uh, the planning window, I'll no now <coughs> add Jacob um, to the phase one where the business consultant has been requested. I can see if I switch to hours that uh, in uh, June, Jacob has uh, 32 hours uh, free and uh, they are requesting 30. So that will actually sum up. Now Jacob is pretty utilized. There's only two hours left. And um, I just will select the time period as we requested in. Um, then I will just add the allocate the 30 hours as requested, drag them in the window. In phase two, uh, I will probably not go with Jacob. Um, I will go with the um, dude because the external resources we just onboarded with the use of uh, PPM Butler, it's actually here. So if I pin this person now and clear my searching, then um, it has now been added into the business consultant role as we assigned him and he's read the virtual dude because the external person is not utilized at all. So now I can simply drag this external person into phase two and uh, where it's read, I need to fix something. Uh, so in this case, uh, there are 30 hours uh, in request and I will allocate 30 hours um, like this. So now you see the virtual dude become yellow because if you remember, we onboarded with the start day of today. So there's no capacity in April and May because the start date was June, the today date. So that actually means that it's an over location and that turns yellow in Team Planner and you can configure the colors. So that actually means that we need to have Jacob in phase two, the first two months, but um, in this case, I will then add 30 hours here, 30 hours in May, and then I will use the external in June. So now I have um, done my traditional planning mode, uh, and then I could write back here, you have Jacob plus external and they are both German let's say that so this is a <clears throat> the very traditional way of uh, working with um, in a matrix organization uh, where you request resources from different departments so if I also requested a, a developer the request will go to the developer a line manager on his screen um, that's very simple it's very intuitive and I think everyone can understand this The next thing we will look at, <clears throat> that will be um, the Agile planning uh, perspective. So in the Agile planning perspective, um, often we will have an epic, and an epic will have a request for some work, and we understand earlier that the work could actually be a feature. It could be feature A and B, it could be a user story. So looking at the um, uh, the agile context where you only have a line manager or team manager or release train engineer that is doing the overall planning, we will go into um, to team planner and we will launch team planner in what we call um, the agile planning mode. And here in the agile planning mode, you see on the very right, you see my release train and the persons that I am responsible for in my release train. And then there is a role here um, that I, I can actually from outside request uh, work to be done in a release train. I'll come back to that later. In this case, you can see the backlog. There are two items in the backlog, feature A and feature B. I could actually uh, switch between the labels up here. So I can see it's a feature A and feature B 
on this project, Epic Team Planner. I could also see the location. So I can see that this uh, feature A and B, uh, the work needs to be done in, um, in Amsterdam. Uh, often we use these locations if you are doing uh, this planning uh, where you have physically um, forced places where to work. It will benefit if you're doing planning of resources uh, that you know the location because then you can optimize it. And then you could switch between FT and hours. So I can actually see that I have a, a worked feature B to be done in release train Delta 1 with four FTs. And in April, uh, feature A uh, with the four FTs. So the ideal work uh, way of working in an agile context where you are not getting requests from outside is simply that you will press a, a new button and then you can create new items uh, directly in your own backlog as a, a team lead. So I could um, I could request uh, on release train Delta 1. That is my release train. And the engagement name, it could be uh, virtual work. The project, it could be on Epic Team Planner. It could have a start and uh, end date. So I could just uh, put in a month in this case. And I could put in a request of uh, two FTs. And I could put that this uh, will be done in Copenhagen instead of Amsterdam. And I will save it. <clears throat> so instead of, <coughs> I'm sorry, instead of having product managers requesting uh, into my department, I'm fully in charge uh, of um, of the work, I add things to my backlog, and now I have the names in my backlog, and now I can see that my named resources, they are actually utilized already. So Andreas is working a half FTE on something, I could just uh, switch to the project names, so that will be the MVP Summit 18. Uh, later, he will work on an um, upgrade HR project. So the way it works now is actually I could take this and drag it down to Jeppe. And now Jeppe has been assigned to Epic Team Planner. If I open, there's still something remaining in my, um, in my backlog. So if I open up this item in my backlog, then you can see it have requested two FTEs. Remaining request is one. So actually what the Team Planner does is as long there are requests that are not fulfilled, it will stay in your backlog. And I will drag the next to the offshore person A. And now it removes from my backlog because I have assigned everything. This is a very smart, intuitive way of working uh, where you simply create your own items and you drag and drop them uh, into the named resources for having the overall overview. So it's, um, it's very easy and simple. So this is the agile planning mode. Talking about um, the planning mode where we are in hybrid, that is where the project manager sometimes requests something and where I work in agile planning mode and I create items by myself. So in this case, I could be a project manager. Um, and uh, if I look at this, um, this is the project manager window. And if I click at the Epic Team Planner, I can see feature A and B. So I could actually uh, search, um, in this case here, you could uh, open up the feature A and B, and we will see that there are uh, some allocations already. If I search for release train, then I have the release train delta one. So if I, now I'm in a traditional mode where as a project manager, I want to request something from an agile team. So I will drag in the release train into my, into my window. And then I could uh, in FTE say, okay, in uh, May, I want three FTEs here to work. Uh, and instead of consultant, we will call it uh, 
work, work. Like this. So now I'm a project manager in traditional mode. I will request something from a release train, or I will also request something um, from an ordinary line organization that could be uh, the business consultant from Team Delta. Like this. That means that I'm now in mixed mode. And you can see if I just collapse this, drop an overview. The business consultant here, uh, let's put in uh, one FT of request in two months. And on the work work in the restraint, it was three FTs. So this is simply how you in traditional mode are doing your request and then the allocation it will end up by having the line manager, and I'll just um, refresh this one. <clears throat> then you will have the line manager in the traditional organization receiving, you can see it here, um, the business consultant, and now I can start doing an ordinary allocation in traditional planning mode here. And if I'm a, a team manager working in, a, in an agile context, um, then and I'll just refresh over we have the data. Uh, then the traditional project manager working in traditional mode has created some work uh, to my backlog in my team. And that will go directly into my backlog instead of me as a line manager, or in this case, if it's an agile uh, organization, it could be. Uh, a release train uh, engineer, it could be a supporter that they are doing the rough planning. Um, so I will just load the data and uh, let's see if the backlog now has been um, uh, preloaded with, uh, with the item from the traditional project manager. And I just wait a little bit and I switch into, um, there's an, a link in the top of the application where you can switch. So if you're in hybrid mode, you can switch between um, traditional planning mode and you can uh, switch to, uh, to agile planning mode. Often in a bimodal organization, you either work in the one traditional and in the other part of the organization work in, the, in agile planning mode. In the hybrid planning mode, often we see line managers, they sometimes switch between the two modes. So now <clears throat> you can see if I select the time frame up here, now I have new work uh, coming in uh, from Team Epic in my backlog. It's called work work. The engagement name, uh, that is work work. And if I click on it, um, I can simply see there are three FTEs. And if I start doing the allocation now, I need to, in this case, I could drag it to, uh, to Jesper in the button because he has nothing to do. <clears throat> And then <coughs> Jesper will be assigned as a resource. Um, and there will still be work up here, and probably there will be two remaining uh, FTEs to assign. So this will uh, <coughs> conclude my, uh, my demonstration. Uh, all data are always available in Power BI. So with Power BI, you will have all the data available, and you can drill down to named individuals and then you can see the allocation of them, or you can of course see it from, um, from a more portfolio perspective instead of individual perspective. So um, Power BI is a very strong tool for understanding the details and to get the overview that you don't have in, uh, in a Team Planner. So um, focus on Team Planner, focus on Project Online, contact Projectum, contact me, you will have my contact information. Uh, catch me on LinkedIn whatsoever. Um, and the last thing that would be to, uh, to conclude with this slide, because this is what we have promised and this is um, the final, um, final call from this session. Thank you very much.
Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you, Jacob, for an awesome session. You're welcome. And uh, let's take, take, take a quick check of uh, if there are any questions. Okay, so it's mostly conversation. Um, all right, uh, if anybody has any questions about the apps that Project M has and all the cool things that Jacob just showed, uh, please do visit their uh, virtual lobby page um, that's on the conference website. Um, and then if you um, post your questions there, I'm sure somebody from Project M will follow up and answer those questions. So, um, and I, I'm, I think Jacob also should give uh, his, some of the contact details that you can talk to Project M. So please follow up on that. And, and lastly, last but not the least, do not forget to submit a session feedback so that we know what's, what worked and what did not work so that we can work on uh, feedback for the next conference. Awesome. With that, uh, thank you, Jacob, again. You're welcome. And over and out. Have a nice day out there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.